excited for today's guest. She performed on the Oscars and most recently traveled the country with this little show called Hamilton. Please welcome to the Zoom, Kendall Yokoyama. Hello! <laughs> how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, thank you so much for being here. I'm so happy to have you. Thank you for having me, this is amazing. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about how we met, because I think it's a pretty cool story. It is a really cool story. So we met um, in Aladdin Jr., which was, gosh, how, what show was that? Was that like number, which, like, was that your fifth show, or? My first ever community theater show. That was? Okay, me too. But you were a dancer before, so you had performing experience. Yes, I've, I've been dancing since I was three, and that was my main focus for, a long time and, and I just wanted to you know do the ballet track and then I always loved singing and then it just kind of fell into place and my two mentors were like oh my god do theater and then and then it happened how about the audition how did how, oh so my voice teacher Vanessa Townsell uh she recommended that I audition for Aladdin Jr and I was like okay, you know, I'll just do it for fun. I'm still like pretty focused on dance. And then after that experience, I was like, no, I must do theater. <laughs> so I finished out my dance commitments and then just been literally a, exactly a year afterwards, I just went full force into theater. That show changed the trajectory for you? Yes, com like completely. Truly after that show, I was like, okay, literally I want to finish these like competitions or whatever commitments, recitals that I had at my studio, um, and then go right back into theater and just focus on theater. And so that's, <laughs> what, I, how old was I, 14 or 15, something like that. So yeah, I think I was, four, yeah, yeah, I just started high school. So crazy, so crazy. Oh my gosh. And then you started doing professional shows very soon after your first show ever. Yes. And that was, all, I forgot. I forgot how I found out about that audition, but um, I think it was someone in like Annie, when I was in Annie, <laughs> and they were like, oh, you know, we're auditioning for Mary Poppins. Um, and I was like, okay, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I didn't know like anything of like the professional musical theater world at all. And so that was a different audition experience. And then that kind of made me be like, oh, now I want to do like professional theater. Cause it's just, all these people are so dedicated and so just um, committed to this show. It was so exciting. So yeah, then I got bitten by that bug. So <laughs> your dance background of being a competitive dancer helped you break into the theater industry at such like a full force. Yes. Com I mean, completely. It definitely made me feel, it definitely got me into the ensemble, um, which uh, got my foot into the door. So that was really helpful to not have to worry about it. And like picking up choreography in just the rehearsal process was so much easier. And I didn't feel as stressed out, even though it was still stressful, <laughs> but yeah. What was the hardest part about you being in professional show at such a young age? Um, you know, I think it was, I love being around adults. I never really had an issue with adults in general. I think honestly, and just not being, you know, they'd be like, oh, let's go out for drinks afterwards. And I was like, I can't even drive myself yet because <laughs> I was like 15. So I was like, I have a permit, but <laughs> yeah. And I think that's the most awkward part. Other than that, working with people that were older than me, more experienced than me, better than me, just made me want to grow and keep doing it. So that was, but that's, yeah, that's the only downfall is being a little young <laughs> to hang out. <laughs> paths crossed again Children of Eden. You were in the adult ensemble, I was in the kids ensemble. Yes. Like being in the adult ensemble at 15? Um, I don't know because I mean Mary, Mary Poppins I was the exact same way and it felt very normal to me I guess because I mean I started out in um, an adult ensemble and even in the community shows before that besides you know Annie and the junior shows um, I was in the adult ensemble so it definitely felt very casual <laughs> to just fit myself right in and actually would have felt weird for me to be um, in a children's ensemble. I was offered once to be in a children's ensemble and I said no just because I was like, uh, I just don't think I'd be used to it. And I just, I truly love being around adults. 
Yeah. Well, I actually had a similar experience. I did Little Mermaid at Cabrillo when I was oh. So I completely yeah. to go to a, a party because I'm like, I have a bedtime. <laughs> I have school. <laughs> I just graduated middle school. And um, yeah, it's a, it's an, oh my God, it's an experience that you can't, you have to just experience it. It's, it's a- Yeah. And the, I mean, even just the audiences are, um, just so different and the the way they manage you know the show and the costumes are you know, more most of the time are yeah just it's a lot different from community theater though community theater is also amazing in its own right so in children of eden we not only got to do the show together but we were ostriches together we were i don't think a lot of people are familiar with the show but there's a noah's ark number where there's yes like two kinds of every animal. And I remember when I was paired with you, I felt so cool. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so sweet. No, I thought we were the coolest animal by far. Besides the, the, the panda? The I don't panda? I, there were so many, all kinds, from all different kinds of places. Um, but yeah, I thought we were the coolest. It was like the headpiece that was attached to our own head. And we had to like do this like motion to be like ostriches, crazy. But still, we had the coolest costume. I actually, hold on one second. My mom gave me, after that production, this ostrich because we were, yeah, mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Lucky stuffed animal. Oh, my God. This is us, Kendall. <laughs> That's so cool. And whenever oh. I'm really wanting a, a show or an audition, I'm always, like, talking to this guy, so... Uh, yeah, honestly, I mean, my lucky ostrich is like my, my lucky sister. <laughs> I'm always just like, let me, we just need to talk this out for a second. And I just gotta hold on to her. So I feel you. <laughs> what have you been keeping yourself busy with in quarantine? Since I'm not touring anymore, no traveling, no nothing. I, and I haven't been home since I left for college for at least this long. I just decided that I do things that I never had time to do ever so that was learning some Japanese so I'm taking lessons in Japanese I I am Japanese American I knew a few phrases but just didn't really know how to speak it really um at least conversational so I decided you know what this is something I always wanted to do this is something that I wanted to do to connect with my grandma um I call her my bachan so both my sides so I was like yeah I why not just learn Japanese uh sounds so easy but it's not it's really hard um but I'm slowly learning Japanese and I also picked up the ukulele um which has been really nice I've always 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 wanted to learn I've always wanted a really nice one and I was just kind of playing on my mom's little janky old old um (laughs) soprano ukulele that was like out of tune and then I finally upgraded to a nicer one and so I've just been trying to learn songs, you know, really casual things. I'm not necessarily taking lessons, but yeah, filling up my time with baking. I've been baking. I think that's been a normal thing for a lot of people, but uh, I'm baking, which I never thought I'd do. Have you made, that's like the staple of quarantine. But, oh, I've been making banana bread. Listen, I've been, been making banana bread for a long time. And my grandma has this banana bread that is the best banana bread. And I will proudly, confidently say this, the best banana bread I have ever had, hands down. Wow. Yeah. So, yes, <laughs> I've been making a lot of banana bread, a lot of, like, blueberry uh, things and pumpkin things. I love pumpkin, so. Very cool. Yeah. What was your life like right before the world shut down? Oh, God. It was very normal on tour, uh, but, you know, it happened so fast. Of Hamilton is normal, but <laughs> in the most popular Buffy show ever. No big deal. Uh, shucks. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was a normal day in Hamilton, just kind of doing, uh, you know, swinging, doing the thing. And then um, all of a sudden, well, let's see, it was like a Thursday night or something. And they were like, okay. 
after our Thursday night evening show, they were like, okay, we have a company meeting right after the show. And then they were like, so we're canceling the rest of our weekend in Miami. We were in Miami, by the way. Um, and it was our last weekend in Miami. And we we're like, okay, then I guess we'll get ready for the next city, which was Jacksonville. And then Friday morning, I wake up and I got an Instagram notica- notification from Hamilton and on their stories, it was like, Jacksonville's canceled. <laughs> we were like, wait, what? And then a few hours later, then our company managers were like, I'm sure you've heard the news. Like, sorry, we didn't get to you sooner because things are just happening so fast. They did the best they could. And they were like, so you can leave today, uh, today or tomorrow, but you need your everything packed, your trunk pack. We get like trunks uh, that they travel through the show and you need that pack that's got to be packed by tomorrow um or that night something like that and then so it was just like in a few hours I was like okay so we're we're not doing it now we gotta wait for some more news and then by like midday it was like you gotta have your trunks packed at the latest 9 a.m next day or something like that and I was like okay (laughs) so then it was like pack everything that day then there were like two flights to go home or wherever you want to go and so I chose a flight literally the next day so Thursday we found out no more Miami Friday it was no Jacksonville pack all your stuff go home (laughs) which normally takes like a week to pack your stuff (laughs) um like if you want to not be so stressed out um and then Saturday I was on a flight back home that is just wild it was it was crazy and then about a week later in california it was like all right now everything's closed and you need your masks on so it was it was uh, yeah it was really crazy i just remember that evening when i had everything packed i'd been packing all day um with my friend elena and i was just like lying in bed i had maybe an hour and a half to sleep before my flight and i was just like i'm so anxious and nervous and excited because i miss my family so much and but I was just, I was like, what? You know, it's just, you never would have expected that, so. No one could have expected oh, so, No. Before, before the pandemic, you were not only in Hamilton, but you were a swing, which I have so much respect for. So coming to competition dance world, then just exploding in uh, regional theater and then going to a national tour, what was the biggest difference between regional theater to a national tour as a swing? Ooh, as a swing. Um, I actually, I haven't really swung regionally, um, but I did, I have understudied roles regionally. And when you do, for me, when I've done a regional show, there's very rare cases when I would have had to go on for these roles because they were, you know, like a month long things to maintain a show for ever <laughs> or until they close um for more than a year really is so different in like the longevity of your body I didn't realize just how we have a physical therapist her name's Tiffany she's one of my good friends um she uh travels with us so we can s- still maintain our bodies and the way I take notes is so different I I have track sheets uh on my phone on my laptop and color-coded Um, they look like, you know, just, they're just long, long, long lists of like every entrance, exit, prop, costume piece, what I have to take on and off for every single track. Um, so it's, and Hamilton compared to any of the other shows I've been in is by far the most detail oriented show I have ever been in and also uses their ensemble the most out of any other show I've been in. We are in every single song except for two if I'm not mistaken, and there's like 50 of them. <laughs> so, so, so it's, uh, it's a really big task and every single track also has a different harmony. It's not just, mm, you're alto, you're soprano, you know, it's, no, it's like you're, you sometimes go to alto here and then you go to like, uh, you sing with the Skyler sisters here and then no, you, you gotta sing with the guys here. It's, it's all like very nuts, but it's so, it was so, I, I'm very deal, Wow, detail oriented. So it was such a nice way for me to do a tracking sheet, get my life together. And I I can really connect the dots after a while. But in the beginning, it was very daunting for sure. Where were you when you booked it? I was, I just finished a class 
and my phone kept buzzing in the class and I felt really bad. Um, but I, I just, I just hear it. What? Have a feeling that it was Hamilton calling? I don't know. I don't know. No, I didn't really think so. The only person that would have been calling was Hamilton, but I thought it would have been like maybe my parent or like, like one of my parents, you know, trying to ask me a question or, you know, uh, someone else. I don't know. I just didn't really think it was Hamilton. I just felt bad that my phone was buzzing. Um, and then after class, I just got a bunch of calls and there were an email and they were like, please call us back. And it was from like, at the time, the New York division of uh, my old agents. And so then I called back and I was on my way to my next class, uh, to my singing lesson. And then uh, they spilled the news and I was on my way in like the middle of the street to, and I like froze in the middle of the street. <laughs> I didn't cry. Um, where a lot of people cried and were around family, but I just kind of like froze and I, I was speechless for sure. What were the thoughts like running through your mind? When you Mainly, how am I going to move all my things <laughs> from <laughs> Boston? And also it was like, how am I going to leave school in the middle of the year? I almost said, oh, it was Thanksgiving, right before Thanksgiving break. So I was like, how am I going to leave? I was uh, first semester of sophomore year, almost done with the first semester. I had really liked my first, uh, my semester that year and my teachers and um, yeah, and then that, that happened. And I think I was in a place where I was like, no, I, I don't really need, you know, any, any professional thing right now. I just, I love my friends. The school, school is, you know, really fun. And then that happened. I was like, okay then <laughs> when you found out the news were you just excited or were you nervous did you think about like oh my god my life is gonna change all of those things and i didn't even really i knew what a swing was but i didn't realize what i had signed myself up for um <laughs> what i got myself into because um i i saw the show once on broadway um and i just thought it was great but i just never thought it'd be a show i was in just because it didn't necessarily see anyone who was as short as me um, in the ensemble or anywhere. So I was just like, oh, it's so beautiful. And of course I could be in it, but I still was like, I don't know. I don't know, you know? You, I think you just kind of have those doubts sometimes and auditioning for it, I, it was such a great audition experience. And I was like, you know what, if anything, these were really great people. I had a really fun time, you know, and I'm gonna go back to school. And then I think, that made my reaction to it kind of like a not so like, oh my God, but just more of like a, whoa, okay, change. This is a change. And I guess I, we're going to go with it. I think your whole audition story is such a great example of how everything happens for a reason. Because yes. going to New York, like, why don't you t talk about that? Because I need, I need to hear that again, honestly. Okay. So I was in New York um, for another audition. I always forget what the audition was even for. Yeah, but I was in New York for another audition. It ended early. And then I was like, okay, well then I'll just, you know, go find another audition. I was saw once on this island and I was like, oh, why not? And I was like trying to find their dance audition. And then I just walked by Hamilton and I was like, like peeked in the window and I was like, Oh, like they're doing a dance call. Cool. And then I saw that there was another door that had their waiting room and there were people stretching. And I was like, Hmm. <laughs> and then I was like, this could go so wrong or so, so well, I don't know. And then I called my mom who's kind of, I, I always have like a gut instinct of like whether I should do something or not, but it's my, I normally call my mom to be like, should I do this? And she was the one who like gave me that extra nudge that I needed to walk into the room and sign myself up <laughs> for the audition, which was an agent call. So I wasn't supposed to be there, but yeah. <laughs> that is just, could you imagine if you just kept walking? Oh my God, I, I don't even know where I'd be. I can't even imagine anymore. It's, I, I probably would just be, just be back at school. I, I mean, and that's fine, but I, just all the things that I've learned about myself and 
and about the show, being able to do the show is so, especially now that I can't, I'm not doing it anymore, it's just even more so such a gift and such an amazing opportunity. And uh, I was 19 when I, when I booked it. So it was unbelievable. I, I don't know what they were thinking. I had never swung before. I was 19. <laughs> I was like, I was like okay. <laughs> I'm glad they trusted me enough that now all my friends are seniors and they're getting ready for, you know, their, their own showcase stuff, doing like directing emphasis. And so it's just amazing. All my friends are, they are so talented and um, yeah, but it's such a different life. I don't, I don't even know school anymore. <laughs> I feel like I only know like the work and the job that I've done for the past year and a half ish or so. What have been the biggest challenges and hardships that you faced as a performer? My whole journey, not just like in. Yeah, hmm. Um, I think one of the biggest ones, and I think every Asian American or Asian performer uh, artist has experienced is discrimination. And I just remember, I never felt so um, stuck really in like, in an ensemble track um, until I went into an audition and it was for uh, Adam's family and I was trying to audition for Wednesday. And the director said, after I finished singing, the director told me, you know, you can't be Wednesday Adams because you are Asian and your family would have to be Asian in order for that to make sense. And I was like, huh? <laughs> I grew up watching Leia Salonga and Les Mis, so I thought that was fine, you know? And uh, was so blind to all the racism involved. And then, you know, I was kind of standing there kind of just shocked. And my mom was like trying to talk to her being like, hmm, why, why is that? And then the guy next to this person was like, oh, you know, it's okay. You can be in King and I, Allegiance, Aladdin. And I was like, Aladdin? Okay. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, you know, all these shows, uh, Flower Drum Song, Miss Saigon, all these shows that was an all Asian cast. And instead of feeling just so defeated from that, I was so angry, but it was like a fiery, passionate, angry and that I was like, mm-mm, that is wrong. And so I think, you know, I've had, and I've had many more moments like that. I had them in school. Um, one of the main reasons why I had a hard time in school, especially my freshman year, was that there were people there that treated me not so well. So uh, school was kind of hard in that sense. Um, though I made a lot of friends, though I learned so much, it was a really hard experience for me um, <clears throat> to venture out from the world of theater that I knew also was kind of crazy. Um, I feel I am lucky that there are certain things that I have not experienced that some people have with the kinds of discrimination and, you know, uh, that happen at an institution because it's it's not fun and it's not good and people really need to step up and hire these oh there's so many people out there and it's not hard <laughs> to find them um and so many people of color so many BIPOC people that are so just have such brilliant ideas and if only people could see that I think that things would change but Anyways, yes, I think the hardships that I have really kind of had were discrimination and just kind of assumptions and un underestimations. I feel like people didn't really know what I could do. So I kind of felt like I had to prove them wrong. And I feel like that was my, that was my motto for the longest time. Prove them wrong, prove them wrong, Pro prove all these people wrong that ever thought I was just one thing. And I know I can do everything. And and as much as I could, and that's what I wanted to do. Um, but instead, it was like, sometimes I would just assume that that's what people thought of me. And I've realized now that it's no, I need to prove myself wrong. I need to prove to myself that I can surprise myself and I can walk into a room and 
be me and that's all it takes sometimes. And if it's not, then oh well. It's, it's such a learning process and I wouldn't take back anything that has happened to me because every single thing that has happened to me that was uh, hurtful or insensitive or uh, demeaning, just I grew from it. Granted, of course, I would not want the, those to have ever happened to anyone or to me, but I've grown from that. I can gladly say that I've grown and continue to grow. So, yeah. As you leveled up in theater and in the industry, um, how did you deal with those voices in your head saying, oh, you're not good enough, you know, just self-doubt? Did you, did you struggle with that? Yeah, for sure. And I, I never really had an issue with my height. Um, or anything like that. And I kind of was so used to being the only Asian in the ensemble that when I saw that there were actually so many more people out there, it was, it was kind of daunting to me, but it was also very much like we are all still our own people. Like we all have something different to bring. And honestly, I just walk into a room now and I'm like, all right, you know what, don't really, don't, you don't have to put your energy into watching other people and judging other people. We are literally being judged. That is our job to be judged, yeah. which is so unfair, <laughs> um, but that's what we signed up for. So why not, why can't we just not judge ourselves? It's so mean, you know? And so I feel like now I try to go into an audition and do like a little talk in my head, like, you know what? try the best you can, bring yourself into this. And if that's not what they want, then it's not meant for you anyway. They're lost <laughs> and it's not meant for me. Yeah, things happen for a reason. And if I fall on my face in an audition, like, of course, I'm going to be like, oh my God. But at the same time, I'm going to be like, well, apparently I was supposed to fall and learn from that. Mm -hmm. I've learned from every time I've done an audition where I felt so uncomfortable. I, I have those in my like body, I can feel the way I felt back then um, in those auditions. And, you know, I'm like, I don't want to feel that way. And I made myself that way. Don't be your worst enemy, you know? This morning, out of nowhere, I was thinking about an audition in my past that went just horribly wrong. And I was just, you know? how, like, awful <laughs> that experience was. But if it had gone well, and say I had gotten into that show, then so many things wouldn't have happened because I wouldn't have been available to audition. So it's like, you know what? Even the times you fall on your face, you're meant to fall on your face because you're going to learn. You're going to get back up and get something even better. Yes, ex that's, that's completely exactly it. And that's actually kind of what happened with, with ha right before Hamilton. I was like, I auditioned for a show. It actually went pretty well, but then I didn't get it. And I was so bummed, but it ended up, I ended up being able to do another show and that experience helped me with my Hamilton audition. And I would have not been able to have the audition that I had without that experience. It's like a full circle, you know? <laughs> I had an audition the day before I auditioned for the prom that just went, it just didn't go well. And I, yeah. it hurt, you know, it, it hurts in some time yeah. than others. And all of those auditions that just didn't go my way helped me for the one that did go my way. Yeah, it's so easy to like slip into that failure mindset, but truly mistakes are gifts because you learn, you learn from them, you know? So what advice would you give either to your, you know, 14, 15 year old self auditioning for these daunting big professional shows or just for people who struggle with the voices inside their head at auditions? Definitely one thing I would say is to not worry so much. I, I, I'm very ambitious. I am very competitive. I coming from a competitive dance world, you know, and I, I feel like it, you know, I, I would just tell specifically my younger self, like, don't worry. Things happen for a reason and things are going to happen to you and change is going to happen to you and you can handle so much more than you think and uh, you will get through anything, you know, and I just have to remember that, you know, you have those constants in your life. You have whether it's, you know, family or friends, you have those people in your life and stick to them because those are the ones that matter and those are the opinions that matter besides your own. But overall, I think 
the biggest thing that I would want to tell young performers is to prove yourself wrong. I know I said that before, but I, I went in with such a mindset of prove them wrong for so long. And I, you have nothing to prove to these people. If these people don't like who you are or just don't like what you bring, or if you had a bad audition, like, oh, well, prove yourself wrong next time. Go, go have the best audition of your life afterwards. And every time, every mistake is just, it's not going to last. Like bad feelings don't last forever and they feel like they do, but they won't. And I feel like if you just kind of get up and prove yourself wrong, prove all your doubts wrong, then you'll kind of build up the confidence that you need to walk into a room and say, I am here. And if you don't want me, that's your loss. <laughs> so I'm also a super competitive person, but once I started competing with my past self versus everyone else in the room, it changes the game. Mm -hmm. You can't control what someone else does. You can only control yourself and at the end of the day. Like you can't just be so worried about everyone else you're competing against, you know? Right. Right. And also like people in the room, like if you watch them, they're amazing. <laughs> Some of them are so good. And even that in itself is a learning experience, but really focusing on yourself is the most important thing. And exactly what you said, you, you can only control yourself. So why not focus on that? Exactly. No, I think it, there's an, a super important balance between like watching other people and learning in an audition, but then also not standing in an audition waiting for your turn and doubting everything that you have because you're yes. with someone else. Exactly, exactly. I've heard so many stories of people messing up words or messing up dance numbers and then just doing their own thing for the last like half of it. And they booked it, you know? <laughs> so you never know, you know, all you can do is your best. And if your best was falling flat on your face that day, then that was your best, you know? How do you try to better yourself, not only as a performer, but as a person? During the pandemic, I definitely have been trying to be more aware of how I think about myself and definitely how I uh, look at the world, of course. Um, I've been going to therapy, which has been, which is very new to me, new territory, haven't done it before. So, um, but it has been in just the little while that I've been with my therapist, it has been so wonderful to kind of break down certain things and certain doubts and stresses and anxieties that I have. And it's going to really help me move forward because it really did hinder me and I didn't do a lot of things because of it. I've also been reading. I've been reading a lot, um, a lot of books. Um, uh, I read Minor Feelings and just a lot of other books about uh, Black lives and really having conversations with a lot of different people, but specifically my family. And it has been a really great experience to talk about how they grew up versus how I grew up and how it's our job to be better than how we grew up or where we grew up and to look in a different way than before. And I, I think it's such a good time. It's such a divided time, but it's such a good time to reflect on yourself and the people that you love that are around you and be like, how can we change and how can we help? Um, which is so, in, so important. And I got you know my whole family to vote uh, early which is really great. And uh, I didn't really grow up knowing the importance of voting. My parents have voted, but I never really was told why. And so I figured that out myself later. And my grandma would tell me, you know, when we came to California, we weren't allowed to live in certain areas because only white people could live there. And it was kind of a moment for me where she was like, and that's why I vote. So you don't have to go through that. And I was like, Oof, yeah, I, I want that for other people and I want that for my family. So yeah, definitely just trying to educate myself and talk to people, talk to my friends about everything that's going on um, and have my constants around to, to keep me sane, <laughs> for sure. Cause I would not, I would be so far gone if I didn't have my sister. She's been my, my main constant for sure. I think it's so important 
as a performer, but as a, just a human being in general to keep your family close. If you're fortunate enough to have family who, you know, you want close. But right. Family helped you through hard times in your career. Oh, yeah. Um, especially during school. School was just that first semester was really hard for me for a lot of different reasons. Um, just didn't really have faculty that I felt believed in me, certain faculty there. And the people that did were my family. And I had friends, but they barely knew me. You know, we just got to know each other. And the people that really were the ones that helped me were uh, my family and my friend, um, Alex. <laughs> he helped me a lot in school. But at least for me, I, I can't handle having like so many other commitments. And I just make sure I put my energy and time into the people that care about me and I care about so much. Being on tour, being so young in regional theater, how did you take care of your mental health? That's like such a huge part of being a performer. On tour, it would just be like to give myself a day to do whatever I wanted, if I could, <laughs> you know, like days off. Sometimes I would want to, you know what? I just, I need to go out, smell fresh air, not a theater. No, I just want to smell a theater. Exactly. Now I take it all back. Um, <laughs> but yeah, at the time I was just, I just, you know, sometimes I just needed to separate myself from the show just to kind of have a breather, um, not have to think about, you know, the stress that can come with it. Um, and yeah, just go out and explore. I loved exploring or just have a day to stay inside and do absolutely nothing. I just really on my days off, I just did what I wanted to do and tried not to make it too stressful, even if I did go out and adventures and stuff, um, just to help me reset, I think, and to have a day to do something that I loved and uh, all day and yeah, just relax. <laughs> Definitely just sleeping and relaxing were like the most important things that helped me stay sane for sure. School, there was not much of that, but <laughs> but on tour, that is that is what I would do. Yeah. So um, what are some of the causes that you promote on social media or are you just passionate about in general? Oh, gosh. There are so many. Marsha P. Johnson was an activist, self-identified drag queen, performer, and survivor. She was a prominent figure in the Stonewall Uprising of 1969. Marsha went by Black Marsha before settling on Marsha P. Johnson. The P stood for pay it no mind, which is what Marsha would say in response to questions about her gender. It is the consideration of who Black Marsha was that inspired the Marsha P. Johnson Institute. So much of our understanding of Marsha came from the accounts of people who did not look like or come from the same place as her. As transness is now more accessible to the world, introducing the Institute to Black trans people who are resisting, grappling with survival, and looking for community has become a clear need. And their mission statement is that they protect and defend the human rights of Black transgender people. We do this by organizing, advocating, creating an intentional community to heal, developing transformative leadership, and promoting our collective power. I think the Black community needs much more recognition for the work that they put in, and but specifically the Black trans community, um, I feel like really needs recognition. And I feel like I found uh, Marsha P. Johnson right around my birthday, and I sent it to my family and I was like, please look into, please like look at what the work that she has done um, and donate because it's, it's going to a really great place and that'll just continue to help more people. And right now it just feels like you can't do anything right. because we are stuck at home trying to, to do a good thing, but then there's only so much you can do. So for me, I don't, always love posting on social media. I think I do when I want to. My friend kind of put it in a good way. There are a lot of slacktivists out there and they were very active when Black Lives Matter resurged and then kind of died down now back to their old feeds. And I, one, I'm not an activist. So, you know, but there also is no clear way to show that you care um, when, you do your own thing. Right. I feel like, you know, it's so subjective. There are so many people that kind of judge me on 
me not always wanting to use social media. And I was like, well, you know, that's kind of a personal preference. And I feel like I created change in areas in my life, like having a lot of conversations with my family. And I had a lot of conversations with my family uh, that to me helped my, my little community at home. And I feel like people not only need to go out into the world and talk to other people and post on social media, but they need to focus on their own communities because that's really where we can make the most significant change. And I feel like some people forget about that, but once we kind of do that, then it's kind of a ripple effect and then we can see a bigger picture. But it all starts with, with where we are now, you know? Um, that being said, I think it's great that, you know, if people want to do that, that's great. But I don't think it's fair when people judge other people for not doing what they think is right. If you could tell your 15-year-old self one piece of advice, what would it be? Ooh, my 15-year-old self. I, I would tell her to keep going. And that sounds so cliche. But uh, I would tell her to keep going because I just started theater. And it, it's correct. That feeling that you're having is right. And that feeling that you're having is meant to be for you and for that time. And it's also, I kind of thought that it was too late for me to start theater by the time I was 15 because so many people did it in school and when they were little and I just started and it is never too late. It is never too late. I mean, if you really think about it, for me, a nine to five job sounds not so great. I'd much rather go to a theater in the evening or in the afternoon and have my weekends filled up with theater than to have them filled up with a regular nine to five job. I think if you, if you love it enough and you know in your heart that you love it enough, there's nothing that can stop you besides you. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, preach. It's <laughs> else, like everything else will fall into place. Even yeah. if you're not like talented enough or at the level, you will work, you will, you will get there by working hard. But if you love it, I think that's kind of the only thing you need because everything yes. will fall. Yes. I think if you love it enough and you are willing to work hard for it, because there are a lot of people that love it, are talented enough, but they may not want to put in the effort, then maybe it's time to rethink. But if you are willing to put in the effort, blood, sweat, and tears, and yeah, you just have your whole heart in it. Yeah, there's really nothing that would be able to stop anyone from doing that. Is the big dream Broadway? Oh, um, there's so many. I don't know. I, I kind of, you know, I had like such, like, I was like, when I was younger, I was like, all right, I'm going to be, you know, on, like in movies by the time I'm 23 or whatever I said, and maybe I was 21, 21, and, and I was, and, you know, do the whole glamorous life, and I definitely don't have that dream anymore. <laughs> I'm also 21 now, so that dream's gone, um, but I, I think, yes, definitely Broadway will always be a dream. I have roots in TV and film, that's kind of how I started acting. So I would love to kind of go back to that. I'm just really keeping my options open. I, the best advice I was ever given when I was like, do I do theater? Do I do TV film? What do I do? They were like, go with the one that you have the most opportunities first. And then you can always go back. There, there is nothing that would hold you back. So I was like, okay. So, and then theater kind of started happening more. And then now I'm here and Eventually, I'm definitely going to want to go back into TV and film. I mean, now I want to go back into TV and film, and I'm living in LA, so it's even more so. But uh, yeah, definitely keeping my options open. But TV, film would be wonderful. I'd love to do a show. I'd love to originate a show. Um, <laughs> and I'd love to do shows that, and work in general, that are, have a good message that are important, that have a lot of BIPOC representation um, in any kind of media, really. So that would be the dream, is to be able to work with uh, anyone of, a whole team of BIPOC people. That would be, whew, that'd be such a dream. If we can handle a pandemic, 
We can handle anything. So just stick it through and we'll come out of this stronger and happier and better than ever. Thank you so much for doing this. You're amazing. Thank you. I'm so inspired. I'm just, I'm so excited for you. I mean, I knew in Aladdin that you were ridiculously talented and then your trajectory just went. Oh my God. I remember seeing your post for Hamilton and I was like, not surprised at all. I mean, (laughs) so talented and, and sweet and you just deserve the world. So I'm just so happy for you. Well, look who's talking. Literally, you are in prom. That is so cool. You got to work with insanely talented people. And you are just as insanely talented. <laughs> Literally, you, yeah, you, you are also, for, I'm going to say this out loud to people, for those people that do not know, Julia is such a lovely human. And that's what matters. If you are a good person, you will go far. And she just happens to be a good person and talented. Thank you. So there's n- literally nothing that can stop you now. I'm so I'm just so proud of you. You've done so much, and uh, and now you're doing this, and you don't have to. You just want to. Uh, I love it. I love it. <laughs>